Hey everyone, so season 1 of The Wolf Among Us has come to its conclusion and the ending took a lot of people by surprise. Some players understood what was happening right away, but a lot of other people were confused following the game's conclusion. So I'm going to try my best to explain exactly what I think the ending means. Now before we start, let's take another look at the ending of episode 5. You're not as bad as everyone says you are. I need to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I feel like we've met before. You're trying to place me. You like my ribbon? Do you like it? Faith War One Two would hide her beauty so she could escape his kingdom. They used to call me the Little Mermaid. Did Dr. Swinehart ever get back to you about Faith? He said he wanted to run more tests. I hope you find what you're looking for. Okay, so for those who don't remember, you're not as bad as everyone says you are is what Faith said to Bigby in episode 1. You're not as bad as everyone says you are. Now let's look at a few other things. Nerissa and Faith both have the exact same purple bag. They're also both right hand smokers. And like Bigby remembered, they have both said the following things. Like my ribbon? Ribbons. Faith wore one too. Do you like it? I need to tell you something. I have to tell you something. The game ends with Faith's voice addressing Big B, written in her blue subtitle color. And if you remember, glamours were brought up several times in the game, and in earlier episodes they showed us exactly how they work and how they can be used to mislead others. All of these things imply that the Nerissa and Faith we meet in the game are actually the same person. If you're having trouble grasping this now, you'll probably understand it by the end of the video because I'm going to go over a lot of evidence that supports this theory as we go on. So from this point forward, try to maintain the mindset that Faith and Nerissa are the same person. There are two common theories to explain this. The one we'll start with is the theory that Nerissa was actually Faith and Glamour. So basically, we never met Nerissa. We just met Faith, who had faked her own death and was pretending to be Nerissa all along. One of the most convincing pieces of evidence for this theory is that when you ask the mirror to show Faith, it says it can't because its lips are sealed. That says to me that Faith is still alive and wearing the ribbon. After all, the mirror was able to show other dead bodies, just not Faith's. At the end of the game, some of the lines that are repeated are, she concealed her beauty to escape the kingdom, Dr. Swinehart is still running tests, and they used to call me the Little Mermaid. All of these hint that Faith is still alive, disguised as Nerissa. The first line, she concealed her beauty to escape the kingdom, tells us that Faith is already known for hiding her true form. She already has a history of concealing her identity in order to escape persecution. It's all in her fable. That means that Faith could very easily live her life glamoured as Nerissa because she already has experience eluding capture by lying about who she is. It's in her nature to hide her identity. The second line, Dr. Swinehart is still running tests, tells us that Swinehart has yet to determine whether or not the head on Bigby's doorstep was actually Faith's. Since the rest of the body has yet to be discovered, it could be that the head on Bigby's doorstep was simply glamoured to look like Faith's, rather than it actually being hers. The third line, they used to call me the Little Mermaid, has an emphasis on used to. In the context it's brought up in, it seems to imply that she's no longer the Little Mermaid. So basically, she's not Nerissa anymore, she's someone else. Another piece of evidence for this theory would be the note that Faith meant to give Prince Lawrence, the one you find in her coat. All it says is, I'm sorry. It would make sense for Faith to leave this note to her husband if she knew she'd be faking her own death. You might be wondering why she went through all this trouble glamouring herself. Well, it seems like Faith wanted the Crooked Man to believe she was dead the whole time to stay off his radar. I think the reason Faith is still hiding her identity after the trial is because if she revealed she was alive the whole time, she'd be the one on trial. After all, she lied to the jury, manipulated Big B, tampered with evidence, and did a number of other questionable things. With all of that in mind, she needs to stay in glamour to avoid being locked up or worse. After all, Snow wants to run a fable town that does things by the book. That would include putting Faith on trial, even if her motives were sympathetic. Now for the other theory, which is a bit more straightforward. Instead of Faith being the one in Glamour and Nerissa being dead, this theory flips it and states that Faith in Episode 1 was actually Nerissa and the real Faith died before the game began. In this scenario, we never actually met Faith, we just met Nerissa glamoured as Faith. But we also assume that what Nerissa said at the end of the game was true, and the head we see on Bigby's doorstep is Faith. Faith really did pay for Nurse's mistake and was killed by Georgie before the game even begins. 
In order to make sure that Bigby would pay attention to Faith's death, Nerissa glamoured herself as Faith and purposely interacted with Bigby. Later on, she placed the real Faith's head on the Woodlands doorstep, knowing that Bigby would see it and start an investigation. Why? Because after interacting with Faith, Bigby would then have a personal motivation to find her killer. This theory is relatively easy to follow, and in the end it's about Nerissa doing whatever it takes to get justice for her friends. Both of these theories make sense, but in different ways. The first theory makes sense because it has a lot of evidence. There are a lot of subtle signs sprinkled throughout the game that tell me that Faith is really alive. Given the second head on Bigby's doorstep, Snow, was actually someone else in Glamour, it wouldn't be unreasonable to say that the first head on Bigby's doorstep, Faith, was also a different person in Glamour. The second theory makes sense in the most straightforward way possible. It's easy to understand, it fits in canon, and it flows well. It's the easiest way of rationalizing the ending, despite it not having as much evidence as the Faith theory. So that's what I've gathered about The Wolf Among Us' ending. I'm not saying that these theories are fact or law. Until we get more of Wolf Among Us content, we're not going to know what's going on. In fact, this could just be a big red herring. But I do think that these two theories are good explanations for the ending based on what we've seen so far, and they're the only two theories I've seen that I can really get behind. So which theory do you stand by? If you have any explanations or pieces of evidence I didn't address in the video, share them in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see them. So I hope you were able to take something away from this, even if you don't agree with my interpretation. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more videos like this one.